Hey guys, I just want to let you know, we charge a standard fee here for all the reviews we do. It helps us keep the site going, but I want to be honest with you, these aren't meant to be endorsements. Let's get into it. We found a nice spot here in West Vancouver. I'm hanging out with Chris Campbell and you're, what, what are you, like a product manager here or some sales elite? Yeah, so I'm the sales manager here at Ohm. Yeah, you're very knowledgeable and you rode out with me. So we've got, uh, this one's the Quest and that's the Discovery. That's the Discovery, yeah. Discovery is a little bit more affordable. Doesn't have the suspension fork, doesn't have the lights and stuff. I was amazed, these both come in four different sizes and two different colors. So this one's kind of the darker gray um, and, a, and a blue, and this one comes in this storm gray and then like a white. Yes, yes, so we took some feedback from customers that they loved having the option of having a limited edition color. Oh. And so we're doing a smaller percentage of them that are in the limited edition color. And so if you act quickly, then you can secure the hotter of the two colors. <laughs> and then later on, we'll have wonderful colors as well for everyone else. There so we go. A Very... little bit of an incentive to get on the on the ship a bit earlier. Ohm has some really cool colors. I mean, if you, if you look at this, this is almost like a satin. It's not quite matte. And I find that matte can sometimes leave fingerprints and stuff. So I, I was really impressed with them. Uh, both of them have these nice aluminum alloy fender 60 millimeters uh, sturdy right and they're wide enough to protect you from uh, splash up and being in you know Vancouver and kind of Canada yeah. there are those rainy days yeah shockingly not every day <laughs> looks quite like this we really we really nailed it man I mean this is just such a what is this beach called where we're at yeah what is this one we're, we're right near Dunderave but we're before it yeah Forget it's the, the name secret of this beach one. right it's you'll have secret to beach. come and check it out yourself and you guys actually have kind of your flagship store or whatever that's we, we rode here from there and you you do like kind of demo rides if someone's coming to look at a bike uh, I thought that was really cool because people could get out here and try this themselves a little bit absolutely if you're in the region we're in North Vancouver right near the auto mall if you're coming to get your car fixed or you don't want anything to do with that come on down <laughs> to us yeah we'll give you a ride for free for an hour we can even get them out to you for the day if you need to do a longer ride to that's phenomenal I mean it's and again it's a privilege to be here I love traveling around and getting to meet with the different teams get the official word so anyway back to the quest this is the first year 2020 that ohm is selling these mid-drive powered bikes they used to use uh, predominantly bionic systems uh, really nice you know and they had uh, very quiet and some regenerative braking and stuff with a mid-drive this is the shimano e7000 it's a little bit better weight distribution low and center it makes both of these wheels quick release and that's really handy if you're someone who's going to take them off make this lighter to carry on your car you can also remove the battery of course that's recommended if you have like one of those hanging rack style things on the back of your car um, or just change a flat or true the wheel or something like that so a lot of the the components on this bicycle are more traditional versus the older hub motor designs where you know the spokes and things were just a little bit different and, and the, the quick release wasn't quite as easy because you had more wires and stuff running to it so I think it's an excellent choice Shimano is a leader in the space and you can see there's the Shimano uh, motor down there display and then the trigger shifters we do have a 10 speed Shimano Dior this is 11 to 36 tooth so it's pretty good range we've got a shadow plus kind of tucked in design with a one-way clutch that's that little gray lever so you can put it in the down position and things are a little bit looser right like that so if you're gonna take the wheel off or do some maintenance and you put it in the up position and now things are a lot tighter and it's not gonna bounce as much so that that's actually like a mountain bike um, component that you see sometimes seeing it on a, a bike like this with the through axles 12 millimeter in the rear 15 millimeter in the front that it's just it's sturdy these bikes feel solid and that's kind of nice because they do weigh a little bit more the battery pack on this is completely internal which is very nice. So back to weight distribution and stuff. It weighs about six pounds, which is not too bad considering this is like 508 watt hours. I think it's 36 volts, roughly uh, 14 amp hours. Does that sound right, Chris? Yeah, 504 watt hours for the battery on this one. And it's actually 508.4 or something like that because yeah. technically it's 36 point whatever. I've got all the stats back at the website, but I, I was impressed that you guys kind of went with Darfun and actually have the battery and the charger external, right? So this is what it looks like. And the cells I believe are uh, LG. There's the charging interface. It's got a nice little LED readout here so you can see how full it is if you've stored it separately from the bike. And then here's the standard four amp charger. Again, Darfun branded there. And I was like, well, you know, what's the deal with that? And they said, well, we could pick Shimano or Darfun and it's an official partner and you're getting the same high quality cells. It's still covered by your two year comprehensive warranty. Um, but that allowed you to have like these, these internal battery designs 
I just, I don't know, do you have anything else to say about that? About the Darfon batteries, uh, the reason behind that choice was particularly that it gave us a little bit more flexibility. Um, we will be at one point bringing out one with an even larger battery capacity. Oh. So that's part of the reason behind that. Thank you. Okay. The price on this bike is a little bit higher because we've got the suspension fork and the and the lights and everything compared to the Discover. I think it's $42.99 USD and then $56.99 Canadian. Yes. Does that sound about right? Yes. Okay, cool. And then the weight, this one's 52.9 pounds roughly, and we are on the medium 18.5 inch frame. We have a medium over here, so I was able to do back to back and like really compare them and scrutinize them. And this one's 49.5, so just a hair under 50. And you could also reduce the weight on this one if you took off the fenders and the rack and stuff, but they're so well done. And I love one of the areas they've really improved for 2020 is they used to have the kickstand mounted right here at the center of the bike. And then you'd get pedal lock, which is where when you back a bike up, the, the cranks tend to turn and kind of cycle with you and then it would lock and sort of jam things up and you, you'd have to stop and lift the bike and kind of pedal forward for a second. And it didn't support this rear rack area quite as well. So having a kickstand right here and then having 40 millimeter, that's that's the wider bolt spacing for this. There are others that have just, I think it's like 20. Um, it's just solid and it's mounted on the inside of that left chain stay. Same thing, if you look at the brake, disc brake rotor right here, nicely arranged. Uh, even the cabling and stuff just streams right down and forward from these TRP Zurich quad piston calipers. So we have quad piston front and rear, 180 millimeter uh, rotor size. And then there's a little magnetic sensor. So instead of having like a magnet on the spoke, they actually put it on the disc brake. I think that's awesome because it means Again, you're not gonna get that kicked out of position and then have inconsistent motor performance. So they've done a really good job. And you can see, here's the quick release lever, but the through axle and just the big design, the extra thick tubing back here means that you're not gonna get this like torsional flex, be it for the frame when you're pulling on it from this nice powerful motor or uh, building kind of a setup like a commuter pack, maybe some panniers or something like eight panniers, which we have over here. I keep calling it panniers and people yeah. are like, that's Indian food, dude. And I'm like, okay, I'm trying, especially I'm in Canada. So French, French Canadian kind of stuff. This is an example of a setup like that. We've got these nice two wheel gear, you know, reflective pannier that's hanging on with the little clip on design, standard gauge tubing, rack time rated up to 25 kilograms, which is roughly 55 pounds. You guys even have some baskets that like slide right on. Yeah, rack time who we partnered with to make these, they make a basket that clips in in one easy step so you can go get all your groceries. Don't use that manky basket at the store, bring your own in. Right, you know, coming back to the frame, we've got a tapered steering tube right here, which gives you some strength and more fork options. Same thing for the Discover over there. Right, so you could upgrade and get like a suspension fork someday if you wanted to, if you started on that bike, it's definitely a more affordable option. But they've gone ahead and done it for you and they picked a really nice fork here. This is the RST First, 100 millimeters of travel, 32 millimeter anodized, black anodized stanchions. I'm not getting much stiction at all. This nice smooth action on this thing and we do have compression adjust so you can lock it out if you want to. And then down here we have rebound adjust. And so that's how quickly it kind of responds back so you can reduce some of the bouncing if you're getting any of that. And of course, you know, the locking it out for those smooth sections of trail. The tires are also very nice. The tires that are on this right now um, aren't, aren't exactly what the final build is gonna come with. This one has them. This is the Schwabi Big Ben. It's got K-Guard, so that's puncture protection. It's got the reflective sidewall stripe. These are 27.5 by two inches, 35 to 70 PSI, and that's a pretty big range. So I've taken the pressure down purposely because I'm a lightweight guy, and I like that kind of smooth, comfortable feeling. It actually felt pretty good even on this like fully rigid frame. And I do want to call out that they've paint match the fork. I really like that. It's bladed. This is hydroformed, like really nice tubing. You can see on both of these frames where the top tube sort of steps down a little bit to lower that standover height. And I have measured that back at the site. So you'll know, you know, how high you're going to have to pick your leg up. Keep in mind, if you have like a trunk bag or something, you'd be easy to kick that. Maybe even a child, uh, you know, kind of a child seat sticking up there. You, you can lean the bike towards you, step over, and then having that lower bar means you can jump off for it if you need to without hanging yourself up. I really appreciate that. This one has a lot of little upgrades on some of the hardware. So we have uh, Richie comp, like looks like headset down there. I think the seat post, same thing. This is 30.9 millimeters, by the way. So you could swap it out and get a suspension post and then you'd get like a full suspension feel. And I think these guys carry the connect like suspension post, right? Absolutely. So probably our most popular upgrade is the connect seat post. Yeah. You get it dialed in for your weight perfectly. 
mm -hmm. and then you're going to have a very smooth ride, Absolutely. particularly when you're going at speed commuting. And from what I hear, this year, you know, they've they've kind of changed the geometry a little, so it's a little bit more upright. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're commuting, it's nice to be able to spot cars, and then it, when you're not leaning forward so much, your your shoulders and arms yes. and your neck don't get quite as you know beat up. So that that's nice. When you combine the tires, the suspension, suspension seat posts, you get a really nice ride. Um, so coming back to some of the other aspects of this bike that I noticed, you know, of course we have the fender bosses, they're, they're using those. They have this custom rack integration down here. This is a rack time proprietary thing, but it looks really nice. You don't have like extra blades coming forward. They've put it a little bit further back so that seat can go all the way down without colliding with your gear. They even have two sets of bottle cage bosses down here, which is awesome because that means you can carry maybe some fluids that are very reachable and maybe a folding lock or some other accessory like that. I definitely appreciate it. And then coming up here to the grips, this is another comfort touch point. Uh, they've gone with the Ergon GP1's dual density rubber. They only want single density over here. So it's a very, very minor thing. And I actually think it looks nice here, but that is one of the upgrades when we come over here to the Quest. And then we have the Ergon ST10 saddle. I am really liking this. Ergon is one of my favorite brands uh, when it comes to comfort and just the style of this thing is really nice too. They've got a little rotary bell going on and then lighting. So I mentioned that the tires, they've got those reflective sidewall stripes. And by the way, Alex rims, really nice stuff. Oh, gosh, there's so much to talk about here. You got these nice black rims matching the black spokes, 14 gauge, and then reinforcement eyelets down there. So that's going to keep the wheels in better shape long term and handle a little bit more weight. So sorry, I didn't want to didn't want to miss out on those. Um, but coming back up to safety, having a reflective sidewall stripe on both tires is nice because it's going to increase your visual footprint. And then having integrated lights, meaning they run off that primary battery source, that's phenomenal. And this one. You know, it's up high, so it's not down here. It's not mounted to like the lowers on the suspension bouncing up and down. It's gonna point where you steer. It's not taking up too much space on that handlebar in case you wanna mount a phone and maybe use the Shimano e-ride app or the e-tube app or maybe gps or something like that you've got plenty of room up here in part because the shimano display itself is so compact just nice it's clean because they did this like this is kind of a, a handlebar clamp with a little mount for a headlight and they went with the supernova i think this is the mini 2 and i think it's like 230 or 240 lumens pretty bright doesn't have side cutouts unfortunately but you do have those reflective sidewalls and it does cast a really nice beam it's aimable with a tool very durable just a tough beautiful solution and then back here we have the supernova i think it's like the just three led solution right there and it's not wired into the brakes or anything it just it kind of turns on or off and you can set that with the display up there <clears throat> so very cool you know again comfort safety efficiency those are all things that have really been nailed uh, with this bike nice pedals adjustable pins so you can lower or raise them depending on what shoes you're wearing and then we've got that nice bash guard on the chain ring so it kind of keeps your pants from touching the chain directly and maybe getting greased up over time the next thing i'm planning to do is to go into the display and how that works but i want to ask if you feel like there's anything i missed or just anything you'd like to add chris uh, i think you managed to cover that pretty well i would say that um talking about simple things like the move in the kickstand yeah. uh, that was partly because of some feedback that uh, even for police spec they need to have a rear mount kickstand so in addition hmm. to stability the, the Quest is a police spec bike. Interesting. Okay, so that's, have you guys been talking with like the local police force about? Might be some announcements in the near future. Well, that's fantastic, man. It's great when you can, you know, be part of the community. Here in Canada, they call it a peace officer, which I think is, is a wonderful uh, differentiator <laughs> of some, <laughs> some regions where it's like, oh man, the police. It's a really positive way to get around and get through traffic and, and make it to people to help out when you need to. E-bikes are, are wonderful in that sense. Uh, this is a class one electric bike so top speed of 32 kilometers per hour 20 miles per hour you guys do sell directly from your showroom but you also ship and then you ship all all over the country so the united states as well yep all across north america no problem whatsoever how much is the shipping or how does that work yeah so shipping we usually partner with velofix wherever oh. possible so that you can deliver it right to your door fully assembled and have a tune so that it fits you just perfectly Otherwise, if they're not available in your region, uh, let us know what your favorite local shop is. We'll talk to them and, and get Team your up. bike delivered. And you guys have been around since like 2005. Yeah. So you're pretty long lived. It's like almost 15 years as of this visit video. Yeah, so yeah, the anniversary is coming up very <laughs> shortly. So we've been in the e-bike game for quite a while and it's really nice to see adoption finally coming in North America. Absolutely, we, we were just out on the trail and seeing people actually riding your bikes. And again, just, just having a wonderful day. Okay, hopefully you can see a little bit better now that we're in the shadows. 
uh, interesting, they've got the E7000 display. In the past, I've seen the E8000, which is color. It looks very similar. And on that one, I've seen like trigger buttons versus this nice plastic, like more minimalist, very slim. I, I really like the button. Uh, design down there, but to activate the bike you actually have to press this silver button on the side of the frame It's nice that it's so high right here. You just reach right down and press it on the other side We've got a key kind of a locking cylinder and they do use abus keys, which is nice But I don't think they're the ones that are in set So I'm not sure you can do key to like might be something you could ask about and then the charging port uh, For the motor right here, and, and it's not really for the motor. It's for the battery But it's mounted on the motor, which is interesting You can charge that battery separately from the bike, but you need like that dongle adapter Which can be easy to lose so keep an eye on that little adapter piece and then coming back down here You'll notice how close that is to that crank arm So you just want to be careful that you're not like kind of bumping that or shearing off the plug I asked them, you know, why didn't you move that up here? And they said, well, you know, we, we knew we wanted to have the locking cylinder up here. Um, and we know that people, when it gets really hot or really cold, that can be hard on lithium ion cells. So it's, it's good to take the battery off and charge it maybe inside or stored inside if you have to put your bike outside or in a garage. So they thought like it'd be, it'd be more useful to have the key port up here and then just let people charge separately. But if you leave it on the bike and you wanna charge, this is still somewhat accessible and then they weren't compromising both the length of the smaller size frame or the frame integrity because they've already got some cutouts here. And I thought, okay, that's a, that's a decent explanation. Um, and they do have this little rubber cover as well and it seems pretty well water sealed. I think this is like IP67 rated the display, the battery, the motor, which is sort of like an iPhone where it's like highly water resistant, that kind of thing. You still wouldn't want to like take it riding out there in the in the drink <laughs> or going anytime. You really don't want to submerge it. You could hose down a bike like this, but don't spray like super hard. And while we're here, I want to point out the nice internal cable routing and everything. It's just a really clean, beautiful design. And a lot of this durability and stuff comes back to Shimano as a brand, which which I really trust. So there's the charging port, there's the key, and now back to the power button on this side. When we press it, the display beeps and comes on. And it's just black and white, there's no color. And it's a little bit small, so if you're way up here, you might not be able to see it, and that's where the Shimano app could come in handy if you have a smartphone. But there's no charging port, there's no like micro USB to tap into the, the power of the battery, which some other systems do have that. I've seen like the Bosch Kiox, and uh, you know, it, it, it does have a little micro USB. That's an area where I feel Shimano could improve. It's several areas. Shimano could improve by ha not having to have a dongle to, to charge the battery directly by adding a little micro USB or something to charge your phone, especially since they do have two apps. And they could add a button over here to cycle through menus, because right now you can only go up or down to change assist levels from off to eco, trail, and boost. Okay, but there's no button to like cycle through from miles per hour to distance, that's like trip distance, odometer, range. Range is super cool, by the way, because it's dynamic. So on boost, you can go about 30 miles down to eco it's like 120 when it's when it's fully um fully charged and then time so that's like trip time average speed max speed cadence this is how i know that it's giving you at least 120 rpm i think it actually goes higher than that closer to 130 which is nice you can spin quickly without losing motor support clock and then it's back to speed so chris is waiting patiently over here because he actually has the is this the e-tube app or do you have the e-ride app up right this now? this is the ride app up right now so it's like a speedometer you got your distance what gear you're in if that was electronically shifting mm -hmm. exactly and so as you change modes right there we see that it's an eco right now and color and so they in do color, have color yeah thing. you have color on your phone that's awesome and then it looks like there's different menus here so clock range and then sort of a multi readout with the shimano e-tube app that's something you can use to just tune how the motor responds and that was one of the unique features of the e7000 do you have anything else to chime in about uh that? yeah uh so the e, e uh e-tube app there you can set some of them a bit differently so if you want to really crank up the power you can have that top boost mode a little bit 
cranked up, or if you're someone who's looking to do some more trekking type applications, you can down tune it a bit to extend your range. Extend your range, great. Yeah, and the, the charger, I mean, it weighs just a couple pounds and it's a two amp charger, so it might take six or seven hours to charge a higher capacity battery, but there's the weight size trade off. And you do have a four amp charger that's sold separately. Yes, yes. So we're gonna have uh, with this bike, the option to get an upgraded charger. And so then you can charge your battery a bit more rapidly and you can also set it to cut off at certain times. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So we've gone through a lot of the features that are just surface level. And again, I was complaining because it's like you literally have to take your hand off and press that little button here. And if you're wearing gloves or something, I just, I feel like Shimano could do better with that. And they already have an external button pad. Just put a button on top or something, please Shimano. Um, but still very minimalist, very clean, durable. If you want to get into the settings and you don't want to use the app, that we showed a minute ago, which is Bluetooth low energy. By the way, that's how it syncs. You can hold this little circle button. Okay, now we got all the settings. So you can clear some of the trip distance, max speed, that kind of thing, set the clock. Light, that's where you turn the lights on or off and you can see they're on right now with that nice beam. It's super bright out right now, but I can actually see it a little bit. And then I'm, I'm just clicking these buttons over here. So I'm down to beep. That's one that I like to disable. <laughs> turn that off. Oh, peace and quiet. Units, miles per hour to kilometers per hour, language, font color. I haven't really done this one a lot, so white or black, so I think it flips it. So see, now it's like bright white background with, with black fonts or black background with white fonts. I think this one's probably using less energy and it, it just blends in a little bit better. So I like to leave it that way. Adjust, I'm uh, not gonna let me in on that one, I guess. Shift timing, also not letting me in. I think that's because you'd need the DI2 electronic shifting. Rear derailleur protection reset, same thing. That's for the electronic shifting. And then exit, there we go. That's it. We've, we've covered all the different aspects of this bike, at least to the best of my ability. There's so much to say because it's using the higher end kit. It does cost a little bit more, but when you come back to like that long standing reputation, people you can actually talk to, nicer specs, custom design frame that interfaces really nicely with these motors and with these components. I mean, to me, this is, this is an awesome bike. It's a very quiet bike too, considering that it has those fenders and stuff. I've really enjoyed it. I think we're just gonna hop on this thing and take off and do a little ride. So I'm with Chris, we're on this beautiful bike trail here. I just thought it would be fun to get some footage of the bikes in action, so lead on. Let's go. Awesome. I'm starting out just in trail. I've actually been riding an eco quite a bit. Just really beautiful out here. Very stable. Those tires, the Schwabi Big Bends. Wow, and look at this view, guys. Just beautiful out here. And I can hear the motor a little bit, in part because it's so quiet out here and I have it in one of the higher assist levels. But, um, you know, the, the higher, the faster you pedal, kind of the higher cadence, the more pronounced the motor is. We got a traffic jam here. Looks like we got a fellow Ohm cyclist here. Beautiful. <laughs> Seen a few different e-bikes out on the trail today. It's pretty neat, you know, Ohm being like a local company and this being like their backyard. I love that. Look at these. Is this where you work out, Chris? Back back over there? Yeah, hang on a few trees. <laughs> Climbing through the forest, hanging out with the Wookiees back yeah, here. Yeah, gotta keep up with the children out here, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, just really nice. Okay, guys, from here you can see that motorized bottom bracket. This is the new Shimano E7000. Only weighs about 5.5 pounds. It has a standard Q factor of 168 millimeters, so that chain lines up really nicely and you're, you're not having to like spread your legs. Uh, super wide like you're on a fat bike or something. That's really nice. I mean, it's just it's a pretty neat motor I was surprised when I heard that it it offered 250 to 440 watts compared to the 6100 That's the new 6000 series motor which goes from 250 to 500, but this one has a constant uh, Newton meter output torque rating of 60 Newton meters whereas that one goes from 50 to 60 so it's it's actually you know, just as powerful, if not more powerful. And it's got three settings. So there's like normal dynamic where you can sort of uh, adjust the different assist levels and then custom where you can adjust all of them. There's a lot you can do with the E-Tube app and then the E-Ride app. 
But from this point of view, I just wanted to show you what it sounds like in the highest level of assist. I'm arrowing up right now to boost. That's the, the most power, um, the highest consistent torque. And then we have a 46 tooth chain ring aluminum and it has narrow wide tooth patterns. So you're not gonna have that chain dropping off. And you can see there's a nice sticker slap guard there to protect that, that right stay. I love that the bike comes in two different colors and four different frame sizes. Love the 10 speed Shimano Dior set up in the rear 11 to 36 teeth. It's, it's pretty good. And then that uh, one way, uh, it's, it's kind of a clutch that allows you to tighten up this drivetrain. So I haven't had a problem with the chain bouncing off because of the narrow wide tooth pattern. And we do have that extra thick sort of a chain ring guard, a bash guard almost. It's gonna protect that bottom bracket if you do get a rock or curb strike or even a log strike if you're going off road. Maybe you swap the tires out. Really nice magnesium Welgo pedals with the adjustable pins. It's, it's a nice drivetrain and it's really solid feeling because we do have that 12 millimeter through axle in the rear, 142 millimeter um, hub spacing. So it's sort of in between the older, you know, like 135 and then the new boost standard for plus size tires. So it's very solid. And with a mid drive motor that's putting out those higher torque ratings, you're not gonna get as much flex in the rear end of the bike. Um, so I really appreciate that. Without further ado, I'm just gonna hop on and pedal along. just awesome and one of the things that the display shows is cadence and i was able to get a, above 120 and still have the motor assisting it starts it stops very quickly you can spin quickly if you want to which is nice if you downshift on your way into a climb uh, but there is no shift detection which is something that bosch only seems to do i haven't noticed a lot of mashing because this is measuring pedal cadence pedal torque and rear wheel speed and they've done a really good job with the rear wheel speed sensor. They don't have like a little magnet that's attached to a spoke. It's actually built onto the disc brake rotor and it's much tighter and cleaner and more durable. So I haven't had mashing. It's been really, really smooth, responsive with the shifting, but that, that's the overview. That's how this thing's set up. Okay, from here, you can see that nice suspension fork, 100 millimeters of travel, feeling pretty good. I'm a little bit of an off-road section here. So I thought I'd pedal along and just give you a nice view. Once you're on road like this, you can just reach up there, lock it out, and you won't get that bobbing inefficiency. But I tend to leave these unlocked or maybe half locked uh, a lot of the time just because it's more comfortable. Yeah, and Chris is on the Discover. So you can see it's very similar, but it doesn't have a suspension fork. And uh, these actually share batteries. So if you got a pair of these, you could kind of swap between the two bikes, which is neat. I'm definitely appreciating the Quest and that air fork, really lightweight. And then sort of the upgrade on the motor, you go from the 6100 to the 7000, which is actually slightly lighter, maybe like 0.4 pounds lighter. Sweet. Wow, is this where we were headed? Yeah, we are at the beach now. That's awesome. See how this puppy handles in the sand. Whoa, boy. That's where you need those like fatter tires or something <laughs> not yes, bad these are very much designed for getting around town <laughs> if you want to be rolling around on the beach we might have some other options for yeah, it's awesome wow great view gets you to the beach though in fine form absolutely found a nice spot and i was kind of hearing uh, the fenders were paying off there i wasn't filling up my shoes with sand oh yeah many benefits to the fenders particularly that you arrive in stock Sweet. Well, this is awesome, Chris. I really appreciate you taking me on a little adventure, getting to see the festival and ride along, make some friends. We even saw that other Ohm electric bike on the trail. It's just been a wonderful time. You guys, for the full write-up on this, this is the Discovery over here and then the Quest. I've reviewed both of them back at electricbikereview.com, have all the specs and everything like that. Chime in if maybe you've owned an Ohm electric bike in the past, you have any feedback, maybe you bought this one. Love to hear that. Uh, ride safe. Love you guys. We'll see you next time.